Well, hello, man cavers. What are we doing again today? We're going to be doing a bit more on the Villiers as we have an update, a new package. So, let's roll the credits and see what's going on. Aha! Welcome to the man cave. Let the games begin. Well, here we are. Here is our Villiers from last time. If you remember, this was the donated engine. And the last time I think we got as far as taking the sump off, we took the head off and cleaned the valves up. But we are going to do a bit more for them. And the flywheel is still loose. So, before we do that, slide him out of the way. We have had a new package through the post with a note. Dear Adam, not sure if you got my email. I was late replying because I didn't see the damn thing. Here's the Villiers carburetor for the engine I donated to you. It looks complete and the right age for the engine. Keep up the good work. We really enjoy the shows. All the best, James and Sybil. Hello there, Sybil. Don't you get too close to that telly. You'll, you'll hurt your eyes. That's what my mother used to say. Anyhow, in here we have a good little Villiers carb with manifold, which I believe will fit straight on. Look at that. Here we have, oh, it's even got the bit of linkage we need to connect it to the governor. Look, look at that. That is super. So we have a good carb, which just needs a clean up. Thank you very, very much, James. Oh, that choker sees. We're going to do some freeing off, some cleaning, some reassembling. He will go on there, connect up to there. Bum, 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 bum. We should do some running, but we'll see, won't we? Anyhow, we'll leave that carb in there for a minute, because we're nowhere near ready for that. In this video, I think what we're going to do is basically lap the valves in, give the engine a clean down, of course, there's a lot of crud and rubbish on there. So I'll do my old trick and just give the engine a clean down and you guys can see it yourselves. Let's get set up. So, yes, Man Cave has a metal tray now, look, to do his washing in. And our old pot of diesel, what we used last time, you know, all the crap has settled out of that. That's nearly as good to put in your motor, isn't it? I wouldn't want to put that in my car. Anyhow, let's just give this a degrease down. And see how we're getting on with it. That's the plug where the HT lead come out of the way. I will not worry about getting too much diesel in there because it'll all be dried out. That sump is not bolted on. We need to remember that. But for the minute, we're just going to soak everything on this engine and hopefully loosen all that dirt off. It will just soak in. And then hopefully when we get our little wire brush on here, it will all come off that little bit easier. There we go. We've got her all soaked in now, look. Well, a lot of this is actually coming off with the paint brush. Look at that. Look at that. A lot of that is just coming off with the brush. Which is perfect. All right. Where is my little brush? There we go. Little brush. Yeah, isn't she cleaning up nicely? Anyhow, we'll probably forward through this because it's not very exciting for you guys to watch me for 10 minutes just doing this little job.
destroyed it. We are a bit clean down. So let me move this diesel old tray out of the way and get the engine back on the bench. And let that damn compressor turn off. Oh, she's off. Yeah, let me just move this tray, get this engine back on the wooden bench, and we can have a better look. Well, when I lifted the engine off, the sump come off. So this old clacking we've got out of our tray, we can stick that in that sump. The rest of it I'll put back in my cleaning pot. There we go. There we go. And we can just clean our sump out, because we didn't get the sludge out of that last time. All we did was got the old oil out of it. So we want to get all that old sludge, what was in this sump. Because remember, this engine come off the scrap yard. It had been pulled off a scrap pile, do you remember? So we can use this. Ah, I'll just have to take that sump bung out. I'll just get as much as I can out. There we go. That's actually got quite a bit of that out, if I'm honest. But we will just take out this sump bung, clean that sump up a bit. Because that's always the bit what's hard to do. Will that bung... <coughs> Jesus Christ! She's a tight one, mate. Hell! I think we're going to have to get this in the Voister on do it. I can't hold the damn thing. Will my voice open wide enough to hold a villius? Yeah, that's what. Right, now we need to get the screwdriver in here and give it a proper undo. She's damn tight. What's going on? Right, there's our sump bung out. She took a bit of getting out, but she's there. <clears throat> so let's drain any more out of there. Well, we got most of it at the top. Look. Let's shove a little more diesel in there. <clears throat> so we can just give that a little rinse about. There we go. There you go. Now I think a wipe out with a rag. Protecting this sump gasket, look. Because there's nothing wrong with it. Remember what I say, reuse what you can, guys. People say, oh, you should, you should buy a new gasket set, blah, blah, blah. Buy a new gasket kit. Guys, trust me. If you can get it to bit saving the original gasket, that original gasket is going to be a lot better than the re reproduced Chinese pattern crap you get now. That I can guarantee. This gasket is perfectly serviceable. It won't leak. Nothing wrong with it. Yeah. You buy the pattern gaskets. Yes, they're all right. They're not as good. They're nowhere near as good as the originals. So if you're taking original gaskets off to replace them with new ones, you're basically downgrading your engine, in my opinion. You're wasting money downgrading your engine just so you can say, oh, that's been rebuilt with new gaskets. Trust me, that's nothing to write home about. If your gasket's leaking and you've got no option, fine. But, if she's not leaking, and you're just replacing it because you're rebuilding the engine, why even bother? Why bother replacing that gasket? Like this one. There's nothing wrong with it, look. It's perfect. There isn't a split in it. It's absolutely... Fine, no crap under it. 
So we're pretty much ready to There you go. We're pretty much ready to um place our engine back on the sump. There we go. Let's get her back on the sump. Where are you go? There she is. Alright. Now which way on that does come this way? Look. Oh, there we There we go. So our engine's back on. Remember last time we did clean all that block out inside? So that should all be done. I think there's got to be some bolts in here. Or some nuts. I'm going to put that back in in case I drop anything in that sump. Look. Put E back on, look. Put our spring washers back on. And have we got the sump bolts for this? They're not sump bolts, are they? What did I do with them sump bolts, guys? What did I do with the sump bolts last time? There they are. I'm using the wrong bolts. I'm using the wrong damn bolts looking at a different pot. These are spare bolts for Barford Atom. Talking of Barford Atoms, have I got a surprise for you? Probably the next video. You will not want to miss it. I guarantee you will not want to miss the next video. Just be assured of that. You won't want to miss it. Ah, I've got to say, all the washers are gone. There they are. Stuck in the bottom of the pot. So yes, the next video you guys will be like. Ah. If you like the Barford Atom we're doing. You will absolutely love. The new project I bought. I'm not giving any more away. I did a deal with the guy only last night. Which was Monday night. On Tinternet. Old Evil Bay. He only had it listed for about two hours, I think. Because it still had it still had six days and twenty-two hours to go when we made the deal and the auction got ended. Some of you may have seen it, some of you may not have. Wendy definitely see it, because Wendy is the one who sent it to me. Hello, Wendy, and Jeff, if you're watching. James, Sybil, young James as well, and Mum Marie, and Dad James, and little sister. How old are you all? All my lovely subscribers. We have White Sapphire, she's a... A long commenter and a very informative lady. I do apologise for assuming you was a gentleman. You know what they say. Assumption is the mother of all bugger-ups. And there's plenty of others. We have Mr. Dragon Plague. He's out there. Loads and loads of you comment. I do read every single comment. And I do have a spate sometimes. I'll sit evenings and... I think, you know, I really need to get through these messages. I do read them all as they come in, really, nightly, but it's replying to them does sometimes take me a little while. Sometimes I'll just get an evening where I'm like, well, wrong size span. I'll go like, well, I'm going to do messages tonight. But it's surprising how long it takes to type out all the individual messages. No excuse, I know. But it does take a bit of time. And a lot of the time after I've been to work and done the videos and done the channel maintenance, which there is a little bit of, you know, adding them in playlists and editing and end screens and keeping on top of all the YouTube stuff. 
Sometimes after I've done all that, uh, I just want to sit down and chill. Yes, I do look at the YouTube videos and I do read the YouTube comments, but I don't really call that channel maintenance. I call that fun. But when you have to sort of start replying to messages, it does take a bit of time. Right. That's tightened down. Now, I reckon we need to tighten him a little bit more. Let me find the correct size spanner. Right, there is our sump bolted down. Excellent stuff. Get back in there, Mr. Sump Bung. There we go. There we go. Perfect. Right, I think we need to now start on the valves. Just see if we can lap these valves in a little. Because they were quite rusty and one of them had seized up. Now they're both opening and closing now. And that noise is just the flywheel rattling. Let me take that off. If not, you guys are going to go, oh, you've got mechanical damage in there. No, we ain't got mechanical damage. It's just the flywheel loose. There you go, look. Now, before we start buzzing and cranking, before we start turning this thing over left, right and centre, I'm going to get a brand new clean cloth, wipe the grit out of that cylinder if there's any, which there isn't really, because I've kept the head on. And I like to keep them a bit clean. <clears throat> And so we don't wash the bores. Yes, that is correct terminology. We can just shove a little bit of motor oil on top of that piston. And that'll just put a film over the bores so when we're turning the engine over, it don't wash them. There you go. You don't want too much where it spills out everywhere. But enough where it just coats the cylinder. There you go. She's coated that cylinder, look. Absolutely marvellous. All right. So how do we grind valves? I'm sure of you know exactly how to grind valves. But in case you don't, here is valve grind and paste. Now, you can use the old dowel and a bit of stick. You know, the old dowel with the rubber pads on the end. Luckily, with Villiers and a lot of these small engines, we have a recess where we can use a screwdriver, which is, I think, a lot better. Because them suction pads, to me, what happened there? Them suction pads, to me, are often not so good. There you go. Let's wipe that piston off the top. Don't worry, that oil is still on the cylinder. We're just cleaning the top of the piston. Because you don't really want oil underneath them valves when you lap them. So just clean under your valve with your cloth. There we go. Same with this one. Under we go. There we go. One side. Two sides. Right. Now we want to open one valve. Either one, I don't matter. This one is our inlet valve. So this one won't be so bad. Inlets are never so bad. Here's your compound. We have course in this end. I'm sure you all guys all know this, but for those of you that don't, there's a coarse paste in this end. And if we take the cap off the other end, there's a fine. Coarse, fine. We want to start with the coarse one. So with your valve fully open, get a little bit of this stuff on the tip of your screwdriver. You don't want a lot, because you don't want it all going down the valve seats and everything. You just want to put a little bit of this 
on the edge of your valve lock. There we go, just a tiny bit. Put your screwdriver in, give her a little twist and then let it down. Maybe not all the way because you'll have the pressure of the spring. No, we can go over the pressure of the spring. And there we go. Just work it backwards and forwards. There you go. And do this for a good few minutes. Lift your valve up, put that stuff back underneath, let it down again, and you'll feel it bite. There you go, that's biting. Now it's not biting, lift it up again, put a little bit under there again. You can just re reuse, poke it down with your nail, and you can hear it getting a fresh bite. When it sounds like that's not cutting, it clearly isn't. So just poke him back under. You can turn a tiny bit more on your glove if you do find you're using it. Don't over do it with this stuff though. So you don't want to see me do this, but basically this is what you do. And after you've done it with the course, bear in mind this could take quite a while. Because you're cutting away hardened steel with a coarse, coarse paste. And basically what you're looking for, I don't well have it now because I've only done it for a couple of minutes, is... A shiny ring around the inside of that seat. There you go. Can you see that shiny ring? Can I get in there and show you that or not? Right, see this edge on the valve? That shiny edge there. That is what we have just polished up. So that's pretty, pretty much not too bad at all. You want to turn your valve on, look for pitting. If you can still see pitting in your valve, and we can't look, see, we can't see no pitting in that valve. So I reckon if we go over that now with fine, that will do us. So I'll get both these valves done, then we'll be back. Right, there is our valves now lapped in with fine and coarse compound. Now, for a matter of course, we want to take this valve cover off now. Number one, I want to see in there, make sure there's no water and crud. And number two, we want to just rinse them valve stems down with something. She's coming off. Is there a paper gasket in there? Will that come off without breaking? Oh, not quite. I think we need to make a new gasket there, guys. Right. Here is inside. Where are we? Here is inside our valve gear. And it looks... It looks very, very good in there. Look how good them valves look in there, guys and guidettes. Can you see that? Right in our valves. They look surprisingly good. Yep, no problem in them at all. But what I would do, <clears throat> what I would do, is just put a little blast of solvent through there. Just to use brake cleaner, I'm using rocket. Just put a little bit of solvent down then, blow them down. A 
And if you have got anything down them valves, like grit, it'll just blow it clean out of the, in all the outlet ports. And give a good blow inside there as well. And if we can, give them a good soaking in them valves. There you go, give them a good clean up. There. There we go. Compressor's back on. Oh, a spot was in them valves now, look. If you did want to go to the problem of checking valve clearances, you have to get your feeler gauge in between the push rod and the valve. Well, I'm just going to do it the old rock test. I can see exactly how much play we've got now between the valve and the push rod. That is perfect. I can just see the little tiny gap between the follower. I can see the little gap between the follower and the valve. If you want to go belt and braces, get your push rods out, but many years of experience in this tells me that that's about right. No problems at all. So they will be fine. You want a little bigger gap on your exhaust than you do on your inlet, and that's the same with every single engine. And if you don't know the reason for that, it's simply because the exhaust side runs hotter than the inlet side so there's a little bit more expansion so you have a slightly bigger gap on your exhaust valve so as the metal expand and it and the metal expands and closes the gap up a little it comes right if you had a too small a gap which is when the engine was cold when it was hot and that expanded you could well have a valve which isn't fully closing quite, losing compression. So always make sure you're done. Right, I think what we're going to do now, before we put the head back on, the job most of you say I'm doing totally wrong, is the ignition timing. <laughs> yes, I know I had a lot of backlash last time about... You ain't done that ignition timing right. Well, I did it on the Atom and it worked. So. The 9 sixteenths. Oh, we're going to go way bigger. There we go. We're going to go to 13 sixteenths. And Buzz, this flywheel. Oh, that's going the wrong way. All right. There you go. Of course, I didn't think that's left hand thread on these. All right, there's our flywheel. Our magnets. I cannot believe how good this ignition is inside here. It is absolutely spotless. Look at that. And I haven't cleaned none of that. You couldn't see a thing I was doing there, could you? I'd zoomed out too long. But yeah, that was absolutely spotless. Do apologise for that zooming error there. I zoomed in so you could see in them valves and hadn't zoomed out to do anything else, have I? <clears throat> Apologies all round. So yeah, these magnets are clean. If you remember, we've got to get the plastic thing with the HT lead back in there. I think I'll set the timing first because that will just screw in later. Um, have I actually got one of them? Or have we got to take the one out of an old engine? I think I've got an old engine about here. Let me have a look. I think we've got an old Villiers here, which probably... Ah, hang on, mate. I oh, know. There's an old back plate here. There it is. Oh, I'm fumbling. 
Oh, it's a Villiers back plate, but that one's broken off as well, look. I think we can buy them new. So we don't bother about that for a minute because that will screw in without having to have the flywheel off again. So we'll time it up, put this flywheel back on. I do just want to give them them points another little clean up. I know we did them last time and we did get a spark back on it. But you can never clean your points too many times. That ain't the right size file. What am I doing? I want one of my little nail files, don't I? Or even better than that. We'll use a damn DA disc. We'll use the edge of a DA disc. 240 grit look. There you go. Give them a damn fine clean. We have got a spark on this, but we did it last time, didn't we? But we just want to file them up a bit more. We'll go on a clean bit and do it again. There we go. Give that a little blow out. Just to make sure any dust and crap is out of there. There we go. And then using the back of your DA disc, which has got your Velcro side on, just go in that gap. Just to make sure it's perfectly dry clean yeah that's come out clean so there you go give it another little blow off there we go another important step the little pad there this is the pad that actually lubes your cam so after you've washed your engine down don't let that stay dry because that's essential so we want to soak that pad in three-in-one oil. I mean, I don't mean drench it, but put enough in there where that's going to soak in. And what that will do, that will keep that and points cams from wearing down. Do you see what I mean? This, I don't know, because I don't rub on the crank. What this does is it rubs on. It rubs on this space of the flywheel. Yeah. And when that rubs on that face of the flywheel, that puts a coating of oil around it. <sighs> so with our flywheel, put a bit of solvent on there. Again, I'm using <clears throat> using some rocket. Give that a wipe down to make sure there's no muck and grit on it. Check your magnets. They are absolutely spotless. I cannot believe the condition inside this engine. I just can't believe it. We want our little mark. Where's our little timing mark? There it be. Look, see that little arrow on there? Can you guys see that? Little arrow there. That got to go to the top. Dunk onto that little arrow there. Look, there's a little notch. The arrow needs to line up for that when you are just before top dead center. So familiarize yourself as to which way this engine turns over. If you're not sure, just roughly hold your pulley on, and then you know you put your rope in this way and pull against the flat. So we know this engine turns this way, which is this way. 
So we'll put him just before top dead centre. Line your arrow up, which is around here. Our arrow is perfectly lined up. And there we go. Rattle him up just a little with your windy gun. There we are. That's not fully tight. We will do that up a little bit tighter with the air. And we should find we can do a revolution. There you go. Arrow, arrow, just before top dead centre. Arrow, arrow, just before top dead centre. So this time when it's now set a tiny bit before top dead centre, you could get dwell gauges, you could get protractors, and do all this so many degrees. Guys, let your eye be your guide, all right? We're not going to the space shuttle. This is not going to fly the next Mars mission. It's a blooming Villiers. Alright. It's a Villiers. So thinking you have to set everything up 250 times percent perfect. Load of rubbish. It's a Villiers. As long as you're approximate, it'll run. Look how that atom runs, right? Look how my atom runs. You've seen it a dozen times now. Start first pull every time and runs brilliantly. All that ignition and everything was set up by eye. You know, set up by eye. It's like talk settings. People, oh, I hope you talked your head down. Talk? Villiers never talk the head down. You ain't even talk settings for Villiers. You know, we're talking Villiers here. They don't have talk settings. You know, you just go tight, but not too tight. So we are going to now replace this cylinder. Hey, blow around your studs, look. Cleanliness. That one stud was came out. That's a through hole. Goes right through the jacket. There you go. Put that piston down the bottom. There we go. Now, before we go putting the gasket on, we want to make sure this is clean. No crap. No crap at all. And we'll just do a little bit of hillbilly. We'll do some hillbilly machining as well. So here's our head. Looks quite good if I'm honest. Doesn't look bad at all. But what we want to do is we just want to give her the best chance possible of being square. Sheet of sandpaper on your wooden bench, flap your head on, and go you around in a circle like this. Obviously make sure your bench is flat and clean with no lumps and bumps. Just do this for a few minutes, or a few seconds. Go around and don't go backwards and forwards, go around in like a circle or an oval, whatever. There. That is hillbilly machining. You'll know if you've got any high or low spots in this aluminium head. It's a little bit dark there, see that? Only a smidgen. That just shows that that head is a little bit in there. And surprise, surprise, that's where the exhaust valve is. Where that head has got the hottest. 
So keep doing your rubbing down. On your bit of sandpaper. There you go, that is now all evenly shiny. So if there was any distortion in that head, we have took it out. There are gonna be haters. I always get the odd hater on the channel. Who say I'm bodgy, I'm whatever. Look fellas, I've said before, I do a channel here where any any one of you guys who are watching this can do this. I make this channel so you don't need specialist tools. So you don't always have to throw a load of cash at brand new parts. So there's waiting for parts to turn up and blah, blah, blah. I do have some specialist tools. Believe me, I do have some. To be honest though, the audience I'm catering for are probably not going to have them tools. They're going to have basic hand tools. You know? They're going to have basic hand tools. So using a tool kit like most people have got at home, that's why I do these videos the way I do them. Just so everybody Got a fighting chance. Now then, up here somewhere, and you're really going to love this, we have a used Villiers gasket from last time. Now, this is a copper gasket, and I'll show you what we're going to do with that. Apart from soaking it in our diesel, just to get her spotlessly clean, which we want to do, we want this gasket spotlessly clean. Now this is like a copper compound, it's not a solid copper gasket, I don't think. Yeah, that's like a compound, there's like copper on the outside, and it's like it's sandwiched in the middle. But we're going to give this a very slight O'Neilling. But you can't go over the top with it because you will ruin the gasket. On some engines, like old Rustons and some old bigger engines, listers, they have solid copper gaskets. Well, you can heat them buggers all you like. Whoops. But these cleanliness, cleanliness men. You've just had sandpaper on that bench. There's grit on there. There you go. We're going to check this old gasket, which actually looks all right. We can get our blowtorch. Just heat her up. Don't go over the top with it. basically doing there is you're reheating the copper which expands it make the molecules molecules sorry relax a little and we'll put the copper back into its original soft state it's called annealing I think the process is called do you see what I mean because where this gasket has previously been compressed all the little All the little atoms and protons and neutrons and everything that makes up this copper has all been compressed by reheating that and getting it really what hot. By reheating and getting it really hot, it allows all their molecules to relax again, causing the gasket to be able to be compressed. There we go. Yes. I am refitting a second-hand head gasket on a billiards. 
a second hand one what come off one of them old scrap engines because this engine didn't have one did it there's our head put him on excellent now what did i do with all the head bolts did they even come with the engine i don't think they did i think if you guys look back on the other video and tell me did this engine come with head bolts i have a sneaky feeling they were missing let me see if i can find some i'm sure somewhere i have a set of head bolts leave it with me so here we are we have washers back on I have found some head bolts, including, if I can now find the damn thing, not forgetting that here and here, we do need to put tin work on. So we need the tower bolts for them. The tower nuts, sorry. I found one here. And I found another one here. So we just got to get these bolted down. And we should be good to go. Alright, I have nipped our engine back in our vice. So we can tighten these head bolts down. With a torque wrench, come on. No, no more of my click, click. We're going to do them in sequence. That one's actually there. We're going to do these in sequence. Till we really know they're all the same. So all we're concerned about is they're the same talk. There you go. This is about 30 foot pound. I told you, man, cave got the tools. If we want to be using them, we got them. There we go. You got to be so careful with these torque wrenches because they are long. You can get so much leverage on them, and on these small engines. You can easily damage them. Always remember, guys, when you leave your torque wrench, back it right off. Don't leave it on the spring. If you leave it on the spring, it's likely to give you trouble in years to come. It won't be accurate. So haters can hate, but Man Cave does have a torque wrench. If you don't like the clicky clicks, I've also got an old-fashioned one look. So I do have a torque wrench. I just tend to feel the way around these old engines. <laughs> right. Let's get you back on the bench. All right. Our engine is back together. Now then, we need to ask ourselves. Have we got any compression? Or are my valves still not working 100%? Alright. I can't hear a lot hissing out of the plug. But there's a way we can accelerate perhaps. Some usage. And see if we can fathom out if we've got any compression or not. How do we do that? Well. I will show you how we do that. So, we get our drill. Because our bore has been washed out, 
If you remember, we did wipe it out before we reassembled the head gasket. So we're just going to put a little bit of lubrication on our cylinder. Just so she's not leaking compression through the, through the rings. There we go. There's a little bit of oil gone in there. Which will work its way into that cylinder just to make sure that no no gases are getting past. There we go. Right, let's put him on air and see if we can give him a spin. Well, she's spinning. All right. Excellent compression look. See that? So for those of you that are wondering, has that got compression? Yep, that's pushing my thumb off me. We have brilliant compression. Come on, drill. There we go. Look at that. So our Villiers is back together with super compression. Happy with that. Now she's had a good spin over and them valves have ah, done their bedding in thing. Let's just loosely put a plug in the old girl. What's this, an old 8-com look? We'll put an old 8-com in here. And if you can get an old eight com at work, damn fine plugs. These old engines love an eight com. Oh crikey yeah. Yeah. Oh Christ yeah, she's got brilliant compression. I know what some of you are also pointing out. Yeah, you gotta run off studying that castle nut. I have. We need to get that little stud out of there I think we're going to try the old cutting down there with a hacksaw blade a little and trying to get a screwdriver in that broken stud heat up and extract it but there you go that's a job for another day for today I just wanted to get this old girl basically timed up cleaned reassembled flywheel back on flywheel back on, head back on, cleaned up, we'll just make a quick gasket, we'll just make a gasket for this valve door look. Now some of you are probably really familiar with how you make gaskets, but if you're not I'll show you anyhow. Alright here's our valve case door. Which has gone quite convex over the years, where someone's just leaked and someone's nipped up another turn. You shouldn't really be nipping it up another turn, because all you're doing is distorting the metal. So we're going to use the top of our voice and just flatten that off again. Very crude. I know. Yeah, like, oh, what a bodge. You shouldn't be doing that. Well, what you should and shouldn't be doing are two different things. Again. There. No, that's got a slight bend in the damn thing still. Got a slight bend in that. There you go. If you want to know if that's got a bend, put your finger one end and hit the other. If you feel your finger springing up, you know you've got a bend. Go all the way around it like that. See, if your finger jump up that end, you know you've got a bend. Then turn it over and do the same thing. 
that's good so this now pretty damn straight look there you go look at that so let's get he down here and make us a gasket so let me get gasket paper here we have many sheets of gasket paper that stuff looked perfect we've got a nice little off cut here we can use to knock our gasket up so we'll get on this edge don't matter if the gasket is a smidge bigger doesn't matter at all just come round in with a Stanley knife there you go with a pair of scissors just go around your edges and that should be there you go about right there we are so line your gasket over your little hole are you watching we've got our gasket lined over that little hole put a bolt or something through that will go through that hole that's too damn big that one will go through make sure you're lined up There you go, you have a hole through your gasket, which you can then enlarge with a different size bit. You can use a hole punch. If you have a hole punch, use a hole punch. I'm just screwing an oversized stud through that hole. There you go, that's enlarged our hole. You can't be enlarging your hole. So there we go, we can now put E on there. Put E on there, I shan't be using any gasket material. No sealer or anything like that. There you go. And we're going back on. And like I said, do not over tighten these. They put a screw, you see there is a nut there, but they put a screw in, a uh, cross, uh, a flat screw in there, really, so you don't over tighten the damn thing. You only want that as tight as you can get it with a screwdriver. If you start going any more, you're likely to distort that paper. There you go. That's about as tight as I can get it with a screwdriver. That'll do us nicely. Couldn't see a thing of that, could you? Yeah. See, there's a screw head in there, what I was saying. So you can do that as tight as you can get that with a screwdriver. See, there's a screw head. So that's telling you, you don't need to do me up with a spanner. You can do me up with a screwdriver. It's sufficient. Now, we don't want to go whizzing this engine over too much, but remember, she's bone dry of oil. There we go. We have our engine. Isn't she looking better? Oh, cool, yeah. Turning it on that production box, I can feel that compression. Yeah. She's got a really good compression. So we need to get our little ignition... Our little rubber ignition thingy, grommet, whatever you want to call it, this damn bit, whatever they call these. We want to get a new one of them and just screw in there, screw an HT lead in, because we know we've got a spark on this, and that's it. Right, shall we, while we're here, 
while we're here, shall we just have a look inside this carb? I reckon we should just have a look inside this carb, don't you? You see exactly what we've got. So we want a spanner, what will fit on there. Cool. Oh, this one's even got the cap on, look. The one on my bar for that one was missing. Cool, I don't think this bowl has been off this carb for a long time. Oh, she's broke loose. God, look inside that carb. Look at it. Look in there. See that what's just come out of there? Isn't that a good job? We had this carb off. Oh my word. Look at the state of the poor old girl. I bet that needle and seat is... Well, the primer seems to be all right. What's our needle and seat going to be like? I bet that won't um, seal any. Poof, we can't even blow through it. So this carb is well and truly blocked. Can we get this little bracket out of here? Do they actually come out? These little, I'm assuming these little pins actually turn. There's no, there's no screw head on that. So I'm assuming you can get these off. Or, no, you shouldn't bend these out of the way, should you? That centre jet don't come out of there, do it? I'm wondering how you release that needle and seat. I don't particularly want to bend this out of the way because you won't reset it right and your float level will be wrong. I didn't want that little pin come out of there. I don't know. Well, that ain't budging out of there at all. I was wondering if that sent a pin come out, but it doesn't. How do you release this so you can actually get to that seat in there and actually just take that needle out? Ah, that will spring round there, look. There we go. All right, let's see if we can get this little seat out of here. There she comes, look at that. Yeah, that little needle has come out of there. Can we blow through it? Yep, we can blow through that. Well, I think... I think now it's the job for the ultrasonic cleaner to do its job, work its magic. So without any further ado, let's get the ultrasonic cleaner set up. Right, we're back. So what we want to do now with our carb, get the loose stuff out. Give her a blow out. There you go, blow all the crap out, best you can. We will just pop this air cleaner off. 
Oh, yes, that's undoing as well. Look, brilliant. Will that turn off? Oh, that's off. Because that will need a good separate clean. I'm going to leave that manifold on. Won't make any difference whatsoever. Blow off the outside. Now our little needle is here, look. There's our little needle. So yes. Put him all in there. Fill him up with water. That's my secret potion of water, washing up liquid and screen wash. Stick he in there. Oh, we're not getting a full submerge on. Put our little needle in. I think the battery's going low on my phone. It's no bleeping. Perfect opportunity to set her going. We'll go 480 seconds. There we go. I will bring you back when this is all clean. Ah. Off. Excellent stuff. So that has now had four lots of going over in the ultrasonic. Whoa, look how that's cleaned up. Look at that. So, ah. Oh, yes. All that rust has gone out of there, look. Pretty damn sharp, isn't it? There's our float bowl, that's come up nice. Our fuel filter strainer. And somewhere in here there should be, if we take our basket out, our little needle look. There we go. And look at the colour of the water. Brownness. So, that's our little ultrasonic done. I think now we need to just dry these bits off with a rag, like so. Uh, wipe this out with a rag to get any loose dirt out what's been broken up in there by the ultrasonic. And I think we can just be blowing this out gently. Blow through your ways. On the outside. Just blow through. Yeah. There you go. Blow through this jet. There we go. Well, that's jet. Yep, that's where our needle goes. Emulsion tube. There you go. What is this screw here for? Do you guys know? So I'm relatively new to villious carbs. What's this screw? That ain't a pinch screw what hold this tube in, is it? I bet that's a pinch screw, you know, what hold this tube in. Betcha. I bet if I'd have took that screw out, that tube will come out. Although it don't feel like it is. Well, that's right out. No, it isn't. I thought that might have been a pinch screw what went through and just held this tube in. We are not going to concern ourselves too much with that. We're going to leave that well alone. Because I'm damn sure this ultrasonic cleaner will have done a mightily fine job inside of cleaning this. There we go. Look how clean she's come. Our little needle. Spotless. Absolutely spotless look. There you go. 
just check that little thing is spotlessly clean give them a little wipe on your rag we're blown out in there drop him back in this hole and spin this thing back round which do spring over that middle stem There you go, that's about where it was before we started. So let's do the old blow check. Oh, well that's seized up in there, that little needle is seizing up. Why is that little needle seizing up like that? like a sticky thing. You can certainly blow through. Let's put a little drop of gun oil in there. There we go, a little drop of gun oil. And work him in and out with the pin nose pliers a few times where are we and oh we'll just all right this must work now so this does on a spring flip back over There you go. Ah, oh, you can see that little pin dropping down. Now look, see that? That little needle is actually dropping down now. Where it weren't before. Excellent. So that's about right. Our float level bend him down a tad to somewhere where he was. See how they work. That float comes down, shuts the petrol off. Excellent. So that's done. We're spotlessly clean in there. Look at that. But we will give it a blow. All around there. And I think we can reassemble. Oops, what haven't we done, look? What haven't we done? We haven't put our paper gasket on. Where's that gone? We had a little paper gasket, didn't we? What's happened to our paper gasket? What the devil happened to that? What the devil happened to that gasket? Hmm. Here are our missing bits. There we go. Look how good that original gasket has stayed. So he can stay on. He hasn't swelled. He hasn't distorted. He has gone on there a treat. So we'll just push our float bowl back on. There we go. And then get our bolt started. There we go. That's our bolt started. This one on the bottom there is mixture. Again, we're not going to touch that for a minute. It's all been through the cleaner. So it'll be good. Put our bolt back in. Give that a little twist to make sure that is all seated. There we go. Span it to tighten him up just a notch. There 
and then we have it and that one goes on there just a dust cap here we are perfectly clean carb don't that look nice apart from that bit of yellow paint on there but we'll get him off don't you worry what a lovely brass manifold look totally brass that manifold right we might as well blow this filter out that's where your banjo go and there's a little filter in there a little gauze there you go that'll just blow all the crap out of that Again, I'm not going to touch them fibre washers because these fibre washers are a lot better than a new one because they are nice and soft and lovely. So leave them fibre washers be. I guarantee you they will not leak. There we go. That's ready to accept the fuel supply. I think now, why don't we... Get this bolted back on the engine. <laughs> Why not? Let's give it a go, shall we? Let me move this ultrasonic out of the way. We don't want that at the minute. There we go. I'll clear him up in a little while. Let us bring our engine back. Get our carb gasket. I'm sure somewhere I had a gasket for this carb. Sure I did. What did I do with it? If not, we can always make a carb gasket. It's not an issue. Yeah, I'll probably have to make one. Yeah, I'll probably have to make one. I thought we had a carb gasket about here, but... Oh, you're looking at it. Look, there it is. We have got a carb gasket. No, that's an exhaust gasket. No, we are going to have to make one. This is the wrong material. Where's our scrap of gasket paper again? There we go. There we go, guys. Now, what we can do, let me show you the old way of making a gasket. Now then, a lot of you will do a gasket with a Stanley knife. Let me just show you the other way to do it. Nip your piece in a solid surface. Put him on the top. Tap around the outside with a hammer. Make sure you hold it. Don't let it run away. This is the easiest way to get a, there you go, that's the easiest way to get yourself a precise oval or shape that you're not sure of. Tap round it, like so. For your holes in the middle, you can sometimes do the same trick. You're better off using a ball pane hammer for your holes. the big hole in the middle there we go and we should be able to just pull these pull these holes out There we go. A gasket. That's how to make a gasket when you have zero tools. Now what are we like on this gas on this mating surface here? Are we okay with that? 
I don't know. I'm not going to risk turning them studs out so I can get a flat block on there. Not going to risk trying to get them studs out and damaging them. We've already got a content with this broken off exhaust stud. So I think what we're going to do with this inlet. Is just wire brush the old girl. Oh, I can't see how much noise that. Do we put that? Look at that. A wire brush has sufficed beautifully. There we go. Compressed air. Your best friend. Now for a little bit of little bit of contraception, I mean protection, we'll put some high temperature silicone on here. Basically a gasket sealer. Just a little smidge around. Not a lot. We don't want it squidging out and going arse all the breakfast time. Beg your pardon, my French. Place our gasket over. Look how that new gasket has come, look. There you go. Little bit of that black sealer on there. Yeah, we've still got a bit of paper in our um in our car block. Poke him out. There we go. Get out, sunshine. There you go. That's nice and clean and flat. Put he on. Do I have Do I have the nuts to go on there or not? Have I got nuts for the inlet manifold? Let me have a look. In my pot of Villiers nuts. And just see if we've got nuts for the inlet manifold. Is that one? Hmm. Well, that one certainly is, and I think, I think this one is too, or I think we might just have slightly damaged threads, let's try another. No, oh, there you go, that going on, excellent. We can now be getting our carb back on. There we go. Not that we've ever had it off in the first place, but we can try, can't we? We can try. Have I got a couple of small washers? I have indeed. One and two. Yeah. That's one on. Can we do it left-handed? Yay, we can do it. We're on. There we go. All right, let's get him tightened down, I think. There we go. There we go. There's our carb on. All we need is a screw to go in that governor arm now. I wonder if I've got one in my box of tricks here. 
I have several little villiers parts and I'm wondering if I've got a screw what will actually fit in there whoops nearly dropped up look will that fit I think pretty sure that's the one So that's going to come that way. Pretty sure. Just wondering if that is the right screw. I'm not sure if that is, you know. I'm not sure if that is the right screw for that. Certainly feels like it. I'm going to have to mess around. And try and find a little tiny screw. No, 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 no. I'll find a little screw for that. To go on this linkage. And then we'll be back. There we go. We have a modern screw in there. But it's black. I know it's Phillips, but... It ain't no, it's man caves. Right. <laughs> so, what else do we need? I think we are missing a governor spring. Well, I know we're missing a governor spring that come up here. I'm sure somewhere I have one. But for now, we're going to... Here, we have a governor spring here, look. I just need the little bolt, what connects it to the top. See what I mean? Here's a little tiny bolt, what connects it to the top. So I need one of them. Not a problem, but for now, our Villiers, minus his HT lead, it is back together. Now isn't that good news? Our little engine that we've saved from the scrapyard. Yeah, she might not even get painted, you know. Of course, cool. definitely got compression. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely got good compression. Definitely. There we go, man cavers. Oh, well, Billy is back together, saved from the scrap. We do have to put this fan back on, don't we? I need to get some bolts for that, though, because I don't think I've got the bolts. What hold the flywheel fan back on? Because it's meant to be this fan. Wrong side, Ben. Wrong side, wrong side, there they go. We need the little tiny bolts, what hold, I'll hang you about. I have down here, look, I have the other flywheel. Do you know, this flywheel hasn't got any broken pins. I thought this flywheel had broken fins, it hasn't. So do we keep the original flywheel of that engine? Yeah, do we keep the original flywheel to this engine? Or just put this other flywheel on which has got the fan on? Uh, or do I risk? 
No, we're going to try it. I'd like to keep that original flywheel. And I'm sure you're going to agree. But I am really, really thinking I might be a bit silly. I might be being a little bit silly trying to undo these bolts. Let me get in there with a smaller wire brush. And we're in there with our wire brush what's been soaking in diesel. Just to give these a bit of a clean up. So I do not want to risk wringing them off. Because if these ring off, it's going to ruin the flywheel. It's going to ruin the flywheel and obviously the nut. Oh, is this the right socket? Yep. Will they come undone? Ah, it's wrong at off, look. Right, that flywheel can still be used with one missing. Am I going to risk trying to... No, I'm not going to risk it. I'm not going to risk trying to get them off. Because I don't have another flywheel, I can pinch a fan off. So, yeah, it's wrong that off totally. Yeah. I'm going to have to get... I'm just going to have to find some nuts what actually fit on this flywheel. I'm pretty sure in my stash I don't have any that small. I'm sure I don't. Now, these are all the nuts which are off previous villiuses. No, we ain't got none that small. But, that can be a problem for another day. This is as far as we're going today. I hope you've enjoyed this extremely long video. I know a lot of you guys say you like the long videos. Well, today you have a long video. I think the longest video I've ever done, I believe it was an hour and 20 minutes. This one may well come in longer than that. <laughs> if you're still watching, but no. Bath of your regard. If you are watching, drop it in the comment if you're watching this. Anyhow, there we are. There we go. Here is our scrapyard villiers, all donated by James and Sybil. Very kind of you. And there we are. There she is. Cleaned up. All we really need to do is. I will get the part ordered up tonight. I'll get this ignition shroud thing ordered. If anybody can tell me exactly what they're called. Because I'm going to go on Villiers part. This bit. What screws in what your HT lead go in? Goes in there, look. Can any of you guys tell me what this is called? Because I'm just going to go on there and look for Villiers HT lead fitting. I'm sure these have probably got some high pollutant technical name. And I don't know what that name is. What are these things called, if any of you guys know? Drop it in the comments. Message me, whatever. And we'll try and sort it out. Yeah, there's our ignition coil down there, look. So, that's it. I will see you guys. You know, I'm really liking this little thing with this, this gearbox and this big pulley. I really like it. I am really sort of starting to like on this engine a lot. There we go. Right. Like, subscribe, and see you guys next time. Bye-bye for now. Ha-ha! My word. What a difference.